Okay, this is a video that's long overdue. And the point of this video is to help you understand how to better use the book Trombone Improvisation Savvy. Now, when I wrote this book, I wrote a lot of words in it. And I thought to myself, maybe I'm writing too much. Are people going to read all of this? But I felt it needed an explanation. And my nature is I'm kind of expressive. If you've gotten emails from me, they're not short. <laughs> they're long. But I got a very interesting email the other day from a buyer of the book. And it may seem odd that I'm highlighting this because he struggles through the book and he, he kind of started out by not being sure that he, he bought the right thing for himself. Because most of the feedback I get is very positive. I get lots of people telling me that this is changing how they're improvising and they have very interesting things to say about it. I got an email the other day from uh, a, a guy, I think it was a guy, who said that he's now closing his eyes when he improvises as opposed to staring at chord changes and trying to figure it out, which I thought was amazing because I would never have thought of that as a benefit. I would never have thought of that as a byproduct of the, of the books, but it is because, and well, let me read, let me read his email just to, to set the stage for this. So he sends me an email. He says, dear Michael, I'm afraid I don't think I'm getting as much out of your book as I could. I'm afraid I still don't have the basics of scale and chord memory and feel very overwhelmed when looking at chord charts. And then he goes on with some of his history of playing. I guess what I've always been looking for is a more didactic lesson plan of the chord scales for me to play again and again until it's in my muscle memory. I thought your book would have it, but I think it's aimed at the next level of players who have that already in their repertoire. I love this email. I love this email because it, it gives me some insight into a misunderstanding about what this book is meant to do. This is not a book that's going to give you all sorts of notes to play and know what to play over C7 and F7 sharp 9 and E flat diminished. That's not the point of this book. Now, I'm not downplaying that because I, before I did this video, I was in my going through my library of stuff and just pulling out a few. I have lots of books full of notes, like, you know, Slominsky's, uh, Solominsky's book on notes. Uh, Coltrane dragged this around with him and wore it out, the legend says. I mean, this thing is, is it's not a trombone book, but if you play it slowly, there's some amazing, amazing patterns and scale stuff in there, lots of notes. Um, if you're a trombone player, you probably know of this, jazz patterns, or not jazz patterns, jazz styles and analysis from David Baker. These are transcriptions of famous classic trombone solos. You should play through them and learn them and play them with the record. Uh, here's a classic Phil Wilson's book full of notes to play, just notes after notes after notes. I, I have worn this book out. The, you know, I've got loose pages and uh, the binding is coming apart. And then uh, Liebman's chromatic. So once you learn what to play inside the changes, Liebman shows you all sorts of notes to play outside the changes. So I'm not opposed to learning notes and, and practicing scales, but I think it has a place. And for me, the place is to build technique. It's not a, a repository for memorizing things that you're going to quilt together in a, in a pre-made solo. Now, if that's improvising to you, that's cool. You will hate my stuff <laughs> because it's the opposite, but... What I want to do with this video is kind of answer his question and take you through like the first 11 pages. And I'm going to go through some of the exercises, explain them a little bit so that if you're a buyer of this book or you want to be a buyer of this book, which I completely encourage, you will understand better the premise of the book and how to, how to go about it. Because the whole thing is about connecting your mind, your musical mind to your instrument. Now, you don't have to play alto trombone to get it. You don't really have to play trombone, although it's written in bass clef. And at some point, I am going to translate this into C and E flat and B flat. So you're probably a trombone player. But I want to take you by the hand and take you through a little bit of this book. The premise of everything I do is to say, connect your musical mind to your instrument. And even more so than that, 
I think the goal is to treat your instrument as a mere amplifier of this. Hal Galper has a great phrase, and he's got a, great, a lot of great videos that I highly recommend watching. And one of the things he says in one of, one of the videos is, this is the instrument you're playing. It isn't this, or in his case, piano. Now, this is an amplifier. It's a timbre shaping implement, but this is what you're playing. And the premise of my books is to help you connect that so that the things you hear inside your head, you're better able to get them out of your instrument. Okay. So if we open the book and we get past the housekeeping stuff about getting the audio files off of SoundCloud and kind of talking about that, the mechanics of this, we start at page, we, at page 10 and I call it opening up your ears. And here I have a very simple melodic phrase. And the idea here is I want you to sing it. Now why sing? Because singing is a huge, hugely important tool for your musicality, for your improvisation, for using this book, by the way. Because singing is that direct connection from your, your, your musical mind. And I would go so far as to say if you can't sing something, you're not hearing it. And therefore you probably can't play it. So in the first, the very first part of the book, I give you that little melody and you can give yourself the B flat and then I want you to sing it. And then do the same thing with the melody down below. You don't have to sing that fast. I'm just kind of, don't want to belabor it. You may have to sing slow and then you may, you know, you may have to give yourself a guide as you go through that if you're not used to singing. Now, quality of singing doesn't matter. All that matters is you're getting the pitch. And I think my experience is any good musician can find pitch on his voice. It may not sound great, but we're not trying to be, you know, Pavarotti here. We're just trying to, 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 to dissect what's going on in here. What do I hear in here? Ba, B flat. That's what I hear. I hope. <laughs> okay, good. So now that we've sung a little bit and we've warmed up, and by the way, there's a great exercise. Let's say you're about to go play in a concert or you're going to work on the book and you want to warm up this instrument. Now, we all know how to warm up, you know, this instrument, the one we play, the machine. You know, for trombone players, we play long tones, we play lip slurs. But how do you warm up this? Well, one way you can do it is by singing and then playing the notes on trombone. Ba, ba, ba. Play it on instrument. Pick random notes. Ba, ba. And see if you can find them on your instrument, on your trombone or whatever instrument you're playing. I promise you, if you do that, and even do it like a minute a day as part of your practicing, maybe you warm up your instrument and you warm up that at the same time, I think you're gonna see some differences in your playing. But definitely try that before you have a concert. Do that little exercise as long as you're not surrounded by you know, the cacophony of everybody else warming up. You can find a quiet space that you can really hear. Try that. So now we're gonna play, and now we're at page 11. And what I say in page 11 is find tunes that you know already really well in your mind and play them in different keys. And I start out with happy birthday. And I purposely, I think this is lost in translation, but I purposely wrote this out in a very unintuitive manner for trombone. Lots of sharps, D sharp, um, G sharp. I mean, it's not impossible, but it, it, it just looks hard. You would not look at that and your first instinct is, oh, that's happy birthday. But it is. And the point I'm trying to make with this is be able to play happy birthday in keys other than what's most comfortable. Like if you're gonna play it at your nephew's birthday party and you, you know, they ask you to play trombone and you immediately start on B flat. Well, what can you, can you start on G? Can you start on F sharp and play it in B? And I guess what I'm trying to get at in this is, this looks hard and I want you to default to just doing it by your ear. So you watch the notes go by and you go, oh, that's happy birthday. And then you do it by ear, and then you pick another, another note. Uh, the one under that is the Gigue from the Bach Cello Suite Number 1. 
If you're a trombone player, you probably practice the Bach cello suites, but do you play them in different keys? So, you know, um, the jig is one of my favorites. And so the, the key in the book, right? But now pick out another note. And see how far you can get with that. Now, you have to have it firmly in your mind. You can't just open up the Bach cello suites and turn around and say, I want to play that by ear. Not going to happen. I have played that so many thousands of times that I know it well enough to be able to play that way and practice warming up my ear that way. And then I do I Thought About You, one of my favorite standards. But you do this with anything. You do, it ha do Happy Birthday, obviously, but Three Blind Mice, Mary Had a Little Lamb, um, the first Noel, Christmas tunes are great because we've heard those forever and we know them. Um, your religious tunes, tunes that are aligned to your culture that you've heard since you were a small child. Those are the perfect starting points for this exercise and to choose different notes to play them. Okay, so we're kind of like warming up in this process. And now we start with the audio files in the book and there are a lot of audio files. I think there's like I don't know, there's over a hundred audio files because it's a book about improvisation, which is all about ear. You know, it's again, it, in itself, that kind of gives you a clue. He's got a CD with his book, but I think, I think the written notes are as important a component to that as the audio. In this book, because of its style, I'm constantly saying, stop looking at the book. Just listen, just listen, just listen. So now we got some audio files. And the first one on bottom of page 12 is called Random Trombone Notes. And all this is, is I'm just, I recorded a bunch of just random trombone notes. And what I'm asking you to do is like a call and response so that you hear the note and then you play the note. So before I was saying, hear it in your mind and sing it and then play it. Now I'm gonna give you the note. And let me just give you a, a little bit of taste of what that is like. Now, all of these exercises, they start simple. Started with B flat. You're gonna find a lot of these start with B flat. Because I wanna give you a win, or at least the easiest chance to get a win before it starts to get harder, and it does get harder. I, th you know, random notes. I thought long and hard. I was replacing some because, you know, that's too intuitive. Later on in the exercise, I want to start making it unintuitive. The the intervals higher. You know, they're not fourths and fifths apart. So the other thing I would say with all these exercises is don't always start at the beginning. So when you're in SoundCloud, which I describe in the beginning, don't necessarily start at the very beginning. Find a place just randomly inside the SoundCloud um, um, graphic and start there. And just use your ears to find where you are. So those are random trombone notes. And then I have miscellaneous random timbres. And what I did with this was now instead of just playing trombone, which again is an easier step because it's our instrument and it's what we're used to hearing, now I'm gonna give you synthesizer sounds, saxophone, trumpet, more weird synthesizer sounds, uh, and I want you to do the same thing, call and response. So that would sound something like this. B flat. and on and on. And the sounds get a little weirder and the range uh, changes and it gets harder as you go on. Again, start in different places and that becomes easy. Page 13. Now we're gonna do phrases, more than one note. And I've given you basic, intermediate, and advanced. Basic phrases, I'm gonna play some right now. They're they're intuitive, the intervals are narrow, the advanced, the intervals are wide. If you've gotten my book, uh, Jazz Patterns for Ear, which I highly recommend as well, you'll see that that book is ordered. You can go to my website, go to altobone.com, 
put your name and email in there and, and, and download that book for free. And it starts out very simple ear training exercises with simple, narrow, you know, major second intervals, and it goes all the way to major seventh. This is kind of my style, is to start you as easy as I think I can. And a lot of times when I wrote these books, it's like, okay, that was the easiest one. And I'm like, no, that's not easy enough. Let's make that the intermediate. Now I'm gonna make the really basic one. And sometimes I was like, well, that's not even the basic one. <laughs> we'll make that the intermediate in advance. Now I'm gonna make the basic one. So I, I worked hard at, at progressing you in a way where you can, you can find your level of difficulty and work from there. So, uh, so here's basic, the basic trombone phrases. They sound like this. Now, I'm not trying to prove anything. I wrote them, I've practiced them. This is not hard they'll get hard. And I think I put, uh, yeah, so let's, let's talk about a difficult one. So that was basic, there's intermediate. And take your time through these. I mean, if you are going through the entire basic one and it's just easy, then move on. If it becomes difficult, bring in the singing. And now sing. Ba, 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 ba. Singing is the step between the hearing and the playing. So if you're struggling with the playing, step back and sing. And if you, if you have trouble singing, step back in the, the degree of difficulty on these phrases. Okay, uh, here's a difficult, this is an example of a difficult one. And again, why is that difficult? Because the intervals were wide for trombone. <laughs> and, and then it goes up and it goes down and they're harder, they're harder than that too. I think that was like in the first third of it. Um, I don't think you'll be bored. If you're bored with everything in this book, I'll give you your money back, you don't need it. <laughs> okay, it's hard enough I think for anybody who, who really sees growth and improvement possibilities for themselves, you get value out of this. At the bottom of page 13, now we're gonna add harmony. So we've done a cappella, single notes, multiple notes. Now let's add some harmony because you've gotta have some fun when you practice. My, my friend, Dr. Rodney Brim, has reminded me for years that if the brain isn't having fun, it's not learning. So we're now gonna get into chords and then we're gonna get into tunes and fun drones that are, that are, that are enjoyable to play with. So this one, is over chords, and that would sound like this. You wait for the next chord, I'm impatient. So. So as you, can see, as you can see, it went from single notes to multiple notes. So it was hearing notes over, played over chords, and then hearing trombone phrases. So fra I use the word phrases to mean more than one note. And again, I put a lot in here um, so that you can start in the middle of the track and again, not be memorizing what you're playing. Uh, and the chords get difficult. You know, I start out with B flat seven and we play to D. You can, and that's part of the exercise too. Can you hear where in the chord that note is? So starting out, you heard it was ba, 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 the, the D, I hope that's D. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but it gets, you know, the chords get hard. D7 sharp nine, E minor, B flat seven, flat five, uh, you know, B flat seven. I mean, not outrageous chords, F sharp minor, major seven, but the, diff the difficulty goes also that the note within the chord becomes less a fundamental of the, of the triad or even the seventh, it becomes the extension. Okay, now let's have more fun. Not that that was that much fun, but but now I've got a, a little bit of a tune, a little bit of a drone, and I call this the black hole. When I were 
bottom of page 16 or mid page 16. And now the idea of this is I'm going to give you more notes, but I'm going to play it over a little bit of a groove. And like every exercise in here, there's permutations you can make of this. So in this, you could improvise over it. You can play the first note, but then play around that first note. The, I, again, idea is to have fun with this stuff. So that would sound like this. And it goes on for a lot longer than that. But you can start to embellish the notes. So instead of just playing G, it would kind of hear it's in D, right? D minor. But there's lots of these drones through this book because I want to make this fun for you. And I think having, you know, uh, lots and lots of cool stuff to play with, like backing tracks. You can go to Abersol to get backing tracks for standards and, and tunes. But what I'm trying to give you is very limited chord progressions, drones, that you can play through. And I think that's what I wanted to cover. Um, one of the things I talk about on page 21 is recording yourself. Super important. Because we all fool ourselves when we're playing, thinking we sound more in tune than we do, think we sound more aligned to the changes than we are. So doing some of these latter exercises later in the book, I think will be helped if you record them. And I talk a little about how best to record in terms of the position of you and the sound source. So I hope that gave you a little bit of a, a better idea of what this book is meant to do. Now, in, in, in part two, we talk about 16 tunes, tunes that you're probably playing or, or will be playing, standard tunes and other things. There's a couple of originals in there partly because I didn't, wasn't going to play the copyright on the melody, so I gave you the changes and put my own melody to it. Sorry, but uh, it, it gives you the opportunity to use your ear now to find your way through the bridge to uh, Have You Met Miss Jones or through the second eight bars of All the Things You Are. And I break it down so that you can work on just the, the part in Have You Met Miss Jones where it's D major. So just work on that and then the transition through the rest of the bridge. So it breaks down what I think are the most difficult parts of the tune, but it's always coming back to hearing it first, singing, playing, recording, listening back, connecting this instrument to this instrument. And if you go to altobone.com, there's a little orange pop-up toaster pop-up, we call it, on the lower right-hand corner. And it asks you two questions. It asks you what your instrument is, and it asks you what your greatest struggle is. And I give you five choices. And these are choices that I've heard for years that are really the top things players struggle with. Go to, this, go to the site, choose your struggle, fill out your, your email and your first name, and you will get an ebook dedicated to helping you through that struggle. And all of them are focused on the ear. Even the one I have on theory is focused on the ear because I have an exercise where I show you the circle of fifths and I play a, a tonality, a chord in one part of the, the circle. And then I play you another one and I ask how, how far or close in the circle was that? So even when I'm teaching theory, I'm using your ear as the guide. So I hope that helps understand this book. Buy this book <laughs> if you're intrigued by this. Get it out of your closet if you bought it before and haven't broken into it. If you've gone through it and you've been searching for 251 patterns, now you kind of understand where this is. 
buy a book, buy Jerry Coker's Patterns for Jazz, buy any of the ones I showed you, find patterns, find your 251 licks, play them, build that facility. But if improvisation means spontaneously composing what you imagine in your mind, these materials are gonna help you get there much quicker. Please write me emails. Write me emails and tell me you're not getting it and it's not working for you, you don't understand. That, uh, I'll make another video or I'll write a blog post. So to the writer of that email, thank you. And to you for buying the book or about to buy the book, thank you and I hope this helped.